Thank you for joining us. And before we get started with today's video, if you guys like what you're seeing and hearing from the Locked On Senators podcast, go ahead and hit like, smash the subscribe button so you can be the first to know about Sens content. Now, we're going to be doing a ton of these prospect profiles. So if you agree this is someone the Sens should look at or steer clear, leave your comment below so we can hear from you. Now, we got 64 of these, so let's get into it. All right, Pilsy, coming in at number... 56 on our countdown of 2022 NHL draft prospects. A guy who's still playing right now in the Western Hockey League Conference Finals from the Cam Loops Blazers defenseman, Mats Lindgren. Yeah, Mats Lindgren. Uh, he's an interesting prospect for sure. And hey, he's got some hockey lineage. His dad, also, Mats Lindgren. Uh, he had a decent hockey career playing over in Sweden for a while. And then he even finished up with seven seasons in the NHL. So I think if you're a Sens fan, you know that's something the Ottawa Senators uh, value is having hockey in your blood and uh, being a kid that's been raised by hockey parents or has siblings that are in the industry because it just it just shows you that they're all in. You know what I mean? Like, it, like Mats Lindgren, he probably doesn't have a backup plan other than playing hockey, which... Is, is great for a young kid to be that focused on his career. Well, he certainly has the work ethic that he's yes. not going to let anybody take this dream away from him. Uh, there's a guy, his his coach there, um, sorry, the pl director of player personnel, I mean to say, with the okay. Kamloops Blazers, had this to say about Mats Lindgren. I've never seen a kid work like this. It's second to none. Special kid as a person, very humble, soft-spoken, polite, rink rat, self-starter, on the ice than more than most kids. In the summers, always working on his game. He's so driven. He wants it. And you might say, all right, cliche city. We hear that about every kid. But <laughs> to me, the proof is in the pudding. This is a Swedish kid who was born when his dad was playing in the National Hockey League, but grew up back in Sweden. He considers himself Swedish. But Pilsy, he had the opportunity to play internationally for Team Canada. And what does he do? He puts aside his feelings and says, I want the opportunity to play on the biggest stage, knowing that later on in life, if the opportunity comes up to, to represent Sweden, he no longer has that option. He is officially a Canadian in the eyes of the national team or international committee because he played at the Youth Olympic Games in the under 16s, had two points in four games there. But to me, that shows a commitment that, Anytime this guy can get on the ice, he's going to go and play. And Ross, how rare is that? That Usually it's the other way around, right? Like it's a Canadian kid that's like, oh man, the competition is too tough here. I can't get into an international team with Canada, so I'll use my... Um, Usually American. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I'll use Brett my Hall other heritage to, to, to play somewhere else. And this time it's the flip zone. And there's a good reason why Canada looked at him, Ross. And from watching highlights... This kid is a great skater. And now when I say great skater, I'm not talking about top speed, uh, f Flash Formanton style. That's not what I'm saying. He no. is incredible on his edges. He can move quickly and efficiently in all four directions, north, south, east, west. And I watched some highlights on him, Ross, and one of the first highlights I saw, he carries the puck into the offensive zone with speed just puts a little bit on his edges to change the angle. And the defender just goes, whoops, like, like Mario Kart slips on a banana peel. And nice. then he goes right by him and feeds it over to the center ice. And he gets an assist on a nice goal. It's those kinds of things. And he's constantly like, he'll sit like if he has the puck in the defensive zone and um, for opponents forwards are coming to attack, he'll wait, wait, wait. And then when they're right at him, He'll pivot and do a spin move and get around them. And he's so good at it that he like it's not it's not a one trick pony. Like he does it often and he does it at the perfect times. And he uses that to gain momentum, to burst into speed, carrying the puck up the uh, the other way of the ice now. So I think when you have a defenseman that is able to skate, not just like a smooth, nice skating defenseman, but is able to use his edges to break the puck out of the zone. That's so valuable. So I think that's a big reason why uh, Matt Lindgren has had success and why he's still a part of the playoffs right now. Having good defensemen like that is key. Yeah, and not only offensively, but how about for gap control on the back end, yep. being able to pivot and be able to close gaps in a hurry. Matt Lindgren listed at five foot eleven. 173 pounds. He's a left shot defenseman who has 44 points 
in 68 games this season with the Kamloops Blazers, had 42 penalty minutes to go along with it. It's his first full season with the Kamloops Blazers. He had a cup of coffee with them four games two seasons ago. And then last year, of course, they were able to play a little bit, but not much. So I guess it was more or less a full season, although pandemic driven only 22 games there. So he's finally producing like those are good offensive numbers. Now in the playoffs, it's been a little bit more of a struggle. No points in the last 11 games. He had a few in the first couple. Uh, So he's sitting at five assists through the 13 games with Pilsy zero penalty minutes and plus 13. So that goes to show you he's using his skating to defend well. And when he's on the ice, it is a net positive, even if the points aren't necessarily there. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you're a good skater like him, Ross, it causes or it allows you not to have to rely on taking a penalty because a guy got by you. You know what I mean? Like when defensemen are kind of flat footed and a guy gets by you and you're like, well, either I hook him and take a penalty or he's got a clear breakaway. So I'll take a a quick hook here. Right. So he's a guy that doesn't have to rely on that. And that's going to be huge for him as he becomes uh, goes into upper competition levels. Now, some issues with him, though, is he does struggle with inconsistency. You mentioned the pointless streak he has last six games, no points uh, heading into the playoffs. So that's tough. He's one of the younger guys in the draft, so hopefully some size will help him out. He does have good offensive decision making, and he's able to read a play and to make a quick pass and know when to use that pivot to get around his man. But from all the reports I've seen from scouts, it just seems like scouts are too worried about his inconsistency to really put their stamp on him and say, yeah, this is the guy. They always applaud his skating, but he's not quite able to keep things consistent enough uh, with getting points on the board and uh, having good defensive uh, play. So no one's quite ready to say definitively he's this type of player and I would draft him at this position. Where do you see the best fit for him? Do you see him as a guy Ottawa could be interested in? I think definitely the Sens would have some interest in him because when you get a, a defenseman that has lineage like he does, his dad <laughs> of the same name, you got to love that. And when he's able to skate like that, it's those are real uh, good things that the Sens look at. I gave him three and a half stars out of five, Ross, because I think he's someone that has the tools that can be a good defenseman, but he's not someone that, like... Like we've said a couple times, I'm not banging on the table if he's available right. saying we got to get this guy. So interesting prospect, Matt's lingering. All right, I'm pulling up the graphic again because I didn't go through the ranking. Scott Wheeler, highest on him, 37th on his list. Craig Button has him at 44. Bob McKenzie has him at 46. And this is one of those rare situations. Maybe not because elite prospects, they beat to their own drum and we respect that. They have him all the way down at 82, which gives him an average of 52 which is surprising for elite prospects, Ross, because they usually key in on the skating, and he's a great yeah. skater. Yeah, very interesting there. Also of note, he is a very late birthday, Pilsy, a late August birthday, making him one of the youngest players yep. in the NHL draft. We'll pull up here his elite prospects page real quick. Hey, August 26, still 17 years old here, and looking at what he's done here in the past, you're you're seeing a guy that at a younger age, was separated from his peers. Lots of points going up there as a defenseman, even as recently as playing in the USPHL. Sounds like a soft landing spot when the WHL couldn't go That's up. That's what but it was, yeah. The points are, are still coming in the in the WHL, but can he be more consistent? As we mentioned, the points haven't been coming here in recent games. But again, this is a guy that's just going to work so hard. I don't think he's going to make it easy for NHL teams to pass on him, especially when we get in to that middle of the second round. This is a guy who I think that Sens fans are going to hear his name a lot on draft day, on the second day of the draft, because that's where the Senators' first second round pick is, I believe 38th overall. It's going to be right around there where his name will start to be in the discussion as a legitimate option.